Hey, I'm Tynan, and today we're looking at the Xtool D1 Pro 40 watt version, which, if you saw it, was too dangerous for the LTT video, but I am trained to know what I'm doing, and we're gonna take a look at it today. This is a little bit different in terms of flow for, compared to a normal short circuit. As you can see, it's already built, mostly because it takes like an hour and a half to build, and we had other things that we needed to get done. And though this is an interesting tool to look at, I'm actually more interested in some of the other things that come with it, like the fire suppression system and the built-in air assist, but the fire suppression system in particular. One of the several problems with this type of laser is the fact that as soon as something gets lit on fire, it's likely just gonna get a lot worse, unless the laser has its own built-in fire suppression system or its own way of stopping. And even if the laser stops, most materials are cutting will continue to burn afterwards. This uses a compressed CO2 cylinder to flood the entire enclosure with CO2 to snuff out any fire that's inside it and stop it from spreading. This particular laser is a diode laser and it's a blue laser at about 455 nanometers, which means you can see it. Although if you see it, you're doing something wrong because it's very dangerous and it can severely damage your eyes if you're not careful. Any laser like this should always have an enclosure. And that is definitely one gripe I have right off the bat is you can buy this without an enclosure. That's really dangerous, thankfully, you can buy an enclosure. Though this one is better than nothing, I'm not sure if it's gonna solve all of the potential gripes I have. Back to the original home of Short Circuit, actually unboxing something. So in here we have a couple of laser danger signs, which is good. A couple of instruction manuals, assembly guides, and a whole bunch of panels. Enclosures like this are designed for a couple of reasons. One is to keep smoke and fumes in one area and be able to vent them out. And the other one is to act as things that dampen how much power is coming out of them. So these should help lower the amount of laser power that comes through and make it closer to safe. This enclosure also comes with a nice little exhaust fan, hose, some mounting hardware, some more mounting hardware the tiny little AC adapter. This is the, the teeny tiny adapter just for the fan. I'm sure there are instructions somewhere, but I'm sure I can figure it out. Maybe. This particular enclosure is designed to be taken apart and ported around with you fairly easily, which is both a good thing and a bad thing. They say that this is flame-proof material. It feels relatively robust, and I have seen some people take blow torches to it and actually do burn tests. I don't know how well it would stand up to the laser blasting at it, and I don't think we're gonna test that today because I don't know what's in this, and that could potentially be dangerous. I think I might actually need the instructions for this. All right, laser, you're going to the side for now. <clears throat> it's my nice lttstore.com screwdriver with the right hex size bit for this, of course. Okay, laser, you get to come back. <sighs> ah, there's a nice little inlet space. There we go. And we have an enclosure. Boop. This is definitely a lot better than the laser just being in the open, but it's not super secure. <laughs> and if you're using the laser, definitely don't trust the enclosure to fully protect you from the laser because there is a ton of places it can still get out. You definitely still have to wear laser safety glasses when operating it. This fan can vent things out, but we also have a fume extractor underneath the table. This has several filters in it. I haven't checked through each one of them individually, though it does appear as though it should filter out most of the particulate and VOCs. There is a chance that not all of the dangerous fumes will get filtered out. So venting the output outside is still a safer option. That's on there. Power switch. There it goes. Well, that is to the power systems done. Next up is actually hooking up computer and power to the laser itself. One of the other things that you can get as an optional add-on, which also I would strongly recommend, is some kind of base for the laser. What we got here is a nice honeycomb base. These are fairly nice because it lets air fly through it. A lot of these lasers have an optional air assist, which helps clear out a bunch of the vaporized material that the laser creates. And these both provide some space in between where the laser's hitting your material and focused. 
and the backstop where it gets absorbed, which in this case is a relatively thin aluminum sheet. This, you need to raise it up off the table or it will not be able to actually sit. Eh. Ah, that's an RTFM moment. <laughs> oh, that's a read the manual moment or read the manual for those oh, who are so inclined. Hee <laughs> hee. Sometimes knowing what you're doing is fun. Other times just stumbling a little bit is more fun. If I understand how this works correctly. Aha, it is now a good height. Sweet. There is also height, height adjustment on the laser body itself. So we'll get to that soon. I fired it with my laser. This is one of the reasons that I was interested in this setup to begin with. I've seen and heard of a lot of horror stories of places burning down when people leave their lasers unattended. Don't do that. Having a system that helps prevent a fire in any circumstance is good. Even if you're in the same room, if you're not paying 100% attention, which if you're running a long cut, it's gonna happen. Having something that'll cut the laser power and also deal with the fire itself is a pretty nice quality of life improvement and also potentially just a life improvement if it works properly. Ugh. Ah, not, not weights. There are the aforementioned compressed air cylinders. These ones I believe are CO2 and they're, they look fairly similar to what you'd use in like airsoft or things like that, although a little bit bigger, which makes me wonder how many times each one works. Uh, power adapter? I think this might be what actually kills the power to the laser if it detects a fire. There's actually quite a few things in here. I believe this is a relay box. And in here, there are a whole bunch of lights. And then also what I'm assuming is a fire detection system. This appears to be an emitter and this appears to be a receiver. If there's a fire in the box and it blocks off enough of the space between them, I believe it'll trigger. It does have a shutoff for the main power for the laser, which is pretty good. It does have a bunch of CO2 that'll blast it into the chamber to put out any fires. Come on. Oh, there we go. Okay. So there's the hookups. I'm only gonna put in two of the bottles. They do say you can do that if the volume is small enough. I have a pretty good feeling that once these are inserted, you are, um, you're very much not supposed to take them out, but that may only be after it triggers. I'm not sure whether it punctures the discs. Just don't want to turn it on and then have it <laughs> blast in my face. Now that I'm ready to plug this in, we are all going to put on our safety glasses. X-Tool does ship with a pair of safety glasses, though I am rather skeptical of them. These are dark green, which generally is not the normal color of safety glasses for a blue laser. These are ones from Thor Labs that are rated and certified to a level that is above what we need in this use case. And as you can see, they're orange. When you're blocking out a blue laser, generally orange is the lack of blue. So it'll absorb all of that radiation. Whereas with this green one, I'm a lot less certain about it. I did watch a video of them demoing the safety glasses working properly, where they blasted a laser straight through it into a power meter though the amount of reduction in power wasn't really high enough for me to be content with using something like these. These are expensive, but you only have two eyes. So we're gonna wear them. Wow, those lights are very orange now. <laughs> Holy moly. And just as a general bit of safety things for the user, whenever your laser is on, for these ones in particular, I would say even if it's powered on, not if the laser's firing, I would have your glasses on. You'd much rather be safe than sorry with anything like this. And eye damage is not gonna be fixed if it happens. So be careful. So as we can see, all these are green and good to go. Yes. Okay, so it does work. That's convenient. Next up, make sure it's on the test mode so I don't blast my ears. Okay, so it is on test. This is where the blowtorch comes in. Aha, that is what you call overkill. <laughs> this is powered. I have this sensor. Again, it's on test mode. Please don't go off. <laughs> so you can see the flashing orange dot. That means it's detecting a fire. And then when I back away, it goes away. Let's actually jump into software and firing this thing up. But before we get into actually firing up this laser, hooking it up to the software and making some cuts, I'm gonna tell you about our sponsor. Thanks SolidWorks for sponsoring this video. 
SOLIDWORKS has an inexpensive cloud version for hobbyists and makers alike. 3D Experience SOLIDWORKS for Makers is a package that includes all the design tools for your needs. Create anything you can imagine with tools for designing, fabricating, rendering, and more. You'll even have access to the free online support and an active online community to share with other like-minded makers. 3D Experience SOLIDWORKS for Makers is not for commercial use and is limited to $2,000 USD profit per year. SOLIDWORKS is giving our audience 20% off, so check them out at the link below. All right, laser is powered on. Xtool has its own Xtool Creative Space app, which you can download off their website. They also say that it is compatible with Lightburn, which generally is, in my opinion, a better software. We're gonna use the Xtool Creative Space today just because it's easier to get set up and we can just hit the ground running with the download. They sent us a base material pack, which is pretty expensive for what you get, but it is a wide variety of things. So there is some benefit to it. That includes everything from making your own necklaces to some pendants, which you can engrave and color to looks like some leather. Though be careful with leather. You wanna make sure that it's real leather and not fake leather because that can create some really nasty gases if you cut it. Another couple pieces of metal, some slate or shale, a bunch of different types of plastic and cardboard for either cards or whatever else you wanna make out of them. A bunch of random types of wood, which are plywoods. Again, be a little bit careful, especially with things that have a lot of glue or adhesive in them. It can create some nasty fumes if you're not careful and not aware of it. A uh, bunch of different types of felts and colored acrylic for this particular laser. You can cut colored acrylics because the light will be absorbed by it and it'll blast it away. But be aware that different lasers have different restrictions when it comes to what kinds of materials they can cut or etch. Jumping into cutting stuff, we're gonna start with wood because it creates the least nasty smelling fumes and is pretty forgiving. Things like this, just slap it down wherever. Once we, ah, so as you can see, this does have a nice little focus dot. I'm gonna read through the focusing instructions on it. I'm gonna guess we're gonna have to adjust the total height. So I believe that for focusing, you need to have this, set, like this piece here on the material. Though I'll confirm that with the instructions on their app. Aha, that's connected. The other thing is something like Thingiverse where you can upload things for free and people can download it and cut it themselves on their own machines. It's kind of nice. Let's just send it and see what happens. I should probably make sure that it's focused first though. Aha, there it is. One thing I'm not sure about is if this knows where it is relative to the grid or if it just starts wherever you place it. So just in case it starts wherever you place it, I'm gonna get this adjusted so it's cutting starting at the corner. And that should be good, hopefully. If not, we'll find out. There is also a framing option, which just gives it gives you the outer profile of the cut. Can be quite nice to make sure that you've placed something correctly. That was a limit switch. It does stop itself from sending itself further away than it expects. It's very loud and hard to ignore, which is nice. I essentially just manually moved it until it stopped beeping and did a full frame. Now we're actually gonna turn it on. I'm gonna go grab a fire extinguisher. One moment, please. <laughs> Conveniently, there's one right outside the door. All right, time to push the button. What is my backup if things start going wrong? Power button down there. All right, so start. <laughs> press the press the button on the device. It's in the enclosure. All right, I'm gonna come around. All right, and away we go. You know how I was talking about being able to tell what side of the piece you're starting on? Yeah. This should start. Close this up again. Hopefully no more loud beep. Oh, so that's a laser. Currently it's just doing a etching pass. So it's not going all the way through the material. It's just kind of burning away the top layer. After it's done its first pass, it'll do the cut pass. I'm gonna cut this one a little bit short and shift to just a smaller section of the cut just as a proof of concept for the machine itself rather than going through this entire cut. Let's take a gander at the thingy. Smells like campfire. It's not bad, especially with no air assist. I will say their software is pretty easy to use, which is nice. And away we go. As anyone who's ever worked with lasers like this, the thing that takes the longest time is trying to do an etch because it 
covers a full area, whereas when you're just doing line cuts, it's way faster. Open her up. <coughs> Whee! Oh, that actually doesn't smell too bad. Oh, are the cutting parameters correct? No, they are not. <laughs> so, that's the one side. Mini little short circuit logo. Unfortunately, <laughs> didn't cut all the way through. Rip. Interesting. Yeah. You can even see a couple of different heights of different layers, and that's just the depth. Mm. Just how much laser power goes onto it, and it burns away a little bit more, and that kind of serves as your color. There are a couple of different algorithms for it, but this one's relatively straightforward and easy to implement. But I definitely want to test out this fire suppression system. And to do that, we're going to head over to the shop and do it there. I have a couple of pieces of cardboard, relatively common to try to cut on devices like this, and I'm going to light them on fire. It does the thing. All right, well. Okay. <laughs> so it'll blast it every 20 seconds, I think. Although the fire looks very out at this point. So this line will get cold enough where it might actually cause like problems, depending on what you're doing. Uh, but they do tell you about that. So it definitely does enough to snuff out this size of chamber with a decently sized fire. It works pretty well. I didn't give it ideal conditions, but it still produced a pretty good cut. But there's a bunch of caveats with this system in particular. It's really not safe, and people shouldn't really buy lasers that don't have purpose-built enclosures to keep them safe. Honestly, in my opinion, this product shouldn't really exist in the form it is. It's a good machine. The, the technology inside the laser itself is cool, and it does a very good job for what it needs to do. But it's not something that I could recommend. I personally would consider running a machine like this, but if I did, I'd build a custom enclosure that is safe and operates it properly and has properly rated glass or windows. So at least my takeaway from this machine in particular is I wouldn't really recommend buying it, even unless you really know what you're doing. But even then, if you know what you're doing, you're probably buying something else. If you were gonna buy this particular system, one of the other complicated parts is you kind of have to buy everything individually, which means the total price is a little bit difficult to nail down. The base machine that we got was the Xtool D1 Pro 20 watt, which is about 1400 US. And we also got the 40 watt diode upgrade kit, which is another 1400 bucks. And then you have a fume extraction and purification system, which runs you another thousand, unless you want to run this out the door. And then an enclosure, which costs another 200. Plus, in this particular setup, the fire suppression system, which is only 200 bucks. While my opinions of the laser itself, not great overall, this is a pretty nice tool. And if you can implement it well in a laser setup that you have, or anything else that could catch fire, it could be a nice tool to save you a fair bit of money if you're not paying really close attention to your heat generating objects. If you liked this video, you should go check out the unboxing I did of the Prusa Mark IV. It's quite a printer.